All right, so the day has come for us to harvest honey. So this is our super honey box that is on, this is our hive number one. And we're gonna be taking the, the individual frames out, shaking the bees off as best we can. Then we're gonna be walking over a little ways away, brushing off any bees that are remaining, and then tucking them inside another box and covering them with a towel. And then we're gonna be taking all of those frames that are full of honey over to a friend's house to actually do the extracting and we'll take a video there. So we'll do a few frames on the video and then take them and then we'll take the video when we actually get to the extracting part. So this is a frame full of capped honey, all white. Yeah. So just, I wonder if we should bring the brush down here. That's what I think we should do. The brush them here rather than up there. I just can't shake them that hard. Okay, here maybe I'll give you them to brush. Why don't you do the brushing then? Still quite a few bees on here. I was hoping the shaking would uh, take a few more off, but yes. Okay. All right, we'll probably just show a couple of shakes. Um, since it's not probably super interesting just watching you shake bees off. <sighs> okay, we've shook all the bees off of the frames of honey and we've got a full box on the bottom and then on top we have half of a box so as you can see there are the frames of honey oops and we got a bee trying to get in there they can smell this so I'm gonna turn this off and we're gonna head over to the honey house all right we're in our friends honey house there's the frames that we pulled out we got in here with no bees and I'm just gonna do a quick scan of the equipment that is the extractor it spins and it gets the honey out and then when the honey's by centrifugal force spins out it goes into that bucket and that's the capping tub where we cut off the wax capping about ready to begin all right so this is one of our frames actually where the wax cappings are a little bit outside the edge of this wood frame they're built a little bit out which is ideally what we will get to um, next year when they build it out a little more and so it makes it a lot easier to use to extract it with a heated knife which is what this is so this is you can see it's kind of bubbling the honey that's on there so what you do you ready with it serious so you kind of just set it on the edge slide it all the way up and it just takes those wax cappings you can tell it's a little bit uneven just takes the wax cappings off the outside and that falls down into the bucket there is some honey that falls with it um, but that will actually go through this um, filter and come out the bottom so we can actually extract this honey out as well but the Hot knife just kind of slices right through, takes the caps off the outside. It's almost like when it gets 
that's near this the top it doesn't do as well so that took most of the wax off and the honey starts to drip out we'll do the back side now which is a little bit further in we have to use a different tool for that this sometimes will work a little bit oh, this actually is working we'll get a little bit of the wax cappings off starting to dig it again. I understand. Is it still on? Yeah. So we'll use that as much as we can and then we have this little comb that you use to kind of just go under and pry it off a little bit. I was just start at the top. I forgot. It's harder for me. It's very sticky business. So just about got all the wax cuppings off of this frame. And what you what we try to do is leave so inside underneath these the wax cuppings is the honeycomb that's all filled with honey and we try to keep as much of that honeycomb preserved in place so that they start with all that honeycomb at the beginning of next year that they don't have to rebuild the honeycomb and so we tried you try to just take as little of the wax cappings off as you can to preserve the honeycomb underneath and then once this is all spun out We'll actually put it outside and let the bees clean off the remaining bits of honey. We'll store the, um, this frame over the winter and then you put this in their hive at the beginning of next year and they've already started with honeycomb that's already been built out underneath here. And after we spin extract these, we'll do, we'll video a little bit um, what they look like after the honey's been extracted out. Do back of this just for a minute. So I'm gonna finish just this last little piece, and then this frame is ready to go in the extractor. And what's fabulous is it tastes really good. <laughs> All right. So you want to show it in the extractor? Whoops. Yeah. So what we do is we flip this upside down so it stops dripping. This goes inside the extractor and all this does is spin at a high speed. Come on. You can see we have six frames, two, four, six in the extractor. We're just going to start it a little bit just to see how balanced it is. Actually, that's pretty balanced because it's not wobbling very much. And so we're going to start spinning. So you look down on the inside, and you'll be able to see the honey kind of flipping out. see our first batch of honey coming out of the extractor. Yahoo! That's so fun! Alright, so we're going to turn this back down a little bit. And they recommend that you flip the frames, um, flip positions, just to make sure that They get really good and spun on both sides. So we'll slide those over. And 
They're a little harder to get in than we expected. Oops, that's a little bit too far. Spin it around. Spin it around. Just spin it around one more time. Just can't get that back in. You're in. You're in. You're in. Oh, these are much lighter than they were when we put them in here. They're pretty heavy with honey when you first put them in, so now they're much, much lighter. But still a little bit of honey in there, so. All right, so this is what a frame looks like after the honey has been um, spin extracted out of it. I'm just gonna grab it up close so you can see all those little honeycomb cells and they are empty. You can see we kind of made a mess <laughs> of it right there. That's probably a rookie mistake, but these look great. And I think that's what happens when they're out, built out a little bit further and you can use the knife. It just gets a nice clean cut on the other side, whereas the ones that we have to use those comb, that little comb and dig it out, you can see it just doesn't come out quite as good. But, um, this frame will get left outside. The bees will go in and clean up any honey that's in here to the point that they'll be really dry. And then we'll put these downstairs and when we put them back in the hive next spring, the bees will actually fix all of this where the wax is kind of messed up. They'll just use the wax and repair it and then they'll start building it further out this way so that next year we'll be able to use the knife on most of it. All right. All right, so I just wanted to show um, where after the honey comes out of the extractor, you can see it's still dripping just a little bit. And what's in the bottom of there are just pieces of wax that have kind of spun out. And what's difficult to see is that that's actually a really fine mesh filter. So it's catching all of the wax um, cappings and pieces of wax and then the honey is just draining through into the bucket underneath and then you can see there there's a pour spout that we can take the bucket we'll take it home and then fill up our honey jars with that and then I also wanted to show kind of what's happening in here you can see in the bottom of there the honey that's in the bottom of that bin so the wax drippings sorry I got Troy's arm in the picture the wax drippings from taking off the cappings are going through there, falling into the bottom bin, and you can see that that's not a very fine filter. It's catching just the big pieces, so there will be wax pieces in the bottom. We will take the honey that's in the bottom container and put it through this same filter here. So we'll pour that honey into here and filter it through that mesh filter. So this is um, considered a four, what's called a 400 um, mesh filter. They have 600, 400, and 200. 400 is what most people do if you're going to take honey to, to the state fair or something like that to try to win an award. The judges typically like the honey to be crystal, crystal clear. And so you would use a 200 filter to get it even more finely filtered but most people feel like 400 is enough and then you still get some of the pollen and other things um, in the honey that help with the allergies. There's a lot of people who eat local honey because it helps them with their allergies and so people feel like with the 400 level mesh strainer or filter that you get a lot of those properties still and it doesn't strain out the good stuff in the honey. So we are just about done. We're in our last two frames. We'll run those last two pieces through the ex or last two frames through the extractor, and then we'll add to this video at some point as soon as we start putting them in bottles. That's when the exciting stuff comes, and oh, it just is so good. I could just drink it right out of the spigot. Mm, yummy, yummy. 
All right, part of the uh, part of the cleanup process is getting the honey off of the frame so that you can store them. Hopefully, it's close enough that you can see. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Wrong way. Um, anyway, um, if you can uh, tell, there's a lot of bees on those colonies. I mean, on those frames. Cleaning them up. We just set them out here about 30 minutes ago, and uh, they clean them up, and take every bit of honey off, and take it back to their hive and reuse it. Here's a little zoom. You can see how many bees are just on that one frame. And we, when we drove up in the car just a minute ago, there's just bees everywhere right now, flying around, so cleaning up the honey. Just another shot of the robbing of the cleaning up of the old hives, and I wanted to zoom in a little bit. What you can see is, if you look carefully, that when there's robbing going on, can you see all the wax down there that's falling off of the frames? It's because the bees don't take any care when they're robbing to be careful, and so they literally just kind of they rip it apart a little bit. So this is going on a couple hours and as you can see it's still going on strong so it seems a little bit calmer than it was earlier but I just wanted to kind of show you that 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 wax that's just literally that they're just breaking off the comb that's falling and you can see there's a lot of fighting going on too so that's what happens when they start robbing. All right so this is what it's all about filling up the jars with the finished product this is pretty exciting stuff. So here we go. Liquid gold. And there you have it. One and a half pounds of delicious honey. Okay, the last step of the cleanup process is we took our wax cuttings that were off of the frames, put them on a cookie sheet, and we're letting the bees clean up the wax. So they'll remove all of the honey off of the wax, and then we'll melt it down. So there's what's left of, well, it's covered in bees. And then we also had, from the wax cuttings, there was a, a metal grate that the honey falls down so you can collect the honey but the wax stays on top but obviously there's some residual honey and we've left that up for the bees to uh, clean up also so they're just about done with the uh, the frames but I think because we put out the new sources of cleanup that we've attracted quite a few bees again so just continuing with the cleanup process kind of fun all right here's our final product we've got just about 49 pounds of honey and in the uh, little canister over here in this right here that's that's uh, the all the uh, wax cappings that we cut off that the bees cleaned out today so it's all free of honey and we're gonna melt it into a wax cake but uh, pretty exciting our first year we're done and uh, 49 pounds Okay, we're getting to the next to the last step, um, melting the uh, the wax cuttings. So as you can see, we've collected all the wax cuttings from our recent work, and they're pretty dry and fluffy after the bees have cleaned them. Plus, we have some uh, burr comb that we've taken off some of the highs before. Um, what we do is we have a little framed-in screen um, filter. We put it over this. Uh, glass bread pan and then you use a towel to filter it so we just put the towel right on top of that and then we take some of our wax cuttings and we put them on there and in retrospect we might have built a little bit larger of one of these but um, you know we can do that on the next round so we'll do this and then it'll melt, it'll filter through the, the uh, paper towel 
and uh, end up being really nice clean honeycomb or actually uh, wax comb. Wax. So we'll put it into our uh, solar wax heater which I made. I just basically took a styrofoam cooler and painted it black and it has and then cut out a spot for the lid so it works like that and we'll just put it right on top and put everything in and put it out in the sun and then uh, check in after it's all melted after we do a couple of rounds of this. Okay I just pulled the uh, final melted wax product out of the uh, solar wax melter which is right there and uh, what you see after it all melts down is the residual mostly honey probably in this case is left on the filter and you're left with a golden uh, actually this color is kind of different I actually brought out the one we did from the uh, other comb and the other one's quite a bit more yellow you can kind of see the difference in the color so the wax cuttings are more of a mozzarella cheese color instead of that golden color so that kind of surprised me anyway that's the end of our honey harvest so the final wax product